Well, good evening and welcome to North Breda Parish Church. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Mark Haw and I'm on staff here. And I'm joined by Rebecca Wilson, who is also on staff here. And we're delighted that you've joined us. Uh, tonight we're joining together virtually and we're going to sing together. We're going to read the Bible, we're going to pray together and we're going to hear it proclaimed. Uh, so please do join us. We're delighted that you've come. But please do join us as we sing as we read, as we pray, and as we listen. We'll hear these words from Psalm 23, these famous words that are so familiar to so many of us. It says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. I don't know what week you've had this week or how you're finding this particular period in life, but whatever your background, whatever your circumstances, we come before the Lord who is our shepherd tonight. And so let's come before him together and let's sing. going to lead us in prayers, so let's pray. Well, let's spend some time in prayer this evening. Now, let's bow our heads, please, as I lead us in prayer. Let us pray. We pray this evening in confession to God. Lord, we acknowledge our sins before you, and as we do so, 
we also remember that Christ has paid for them on the cross. We know that he has drawn a line under them, all of them, no matter how serious or how trivial. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We give you thanks, Lord, for that forgiveness. Amen. It's Trinity Sunday and we pray to God, the one who has revealed himself as three persons in one God. O God, our Father, Son and Holy Spirit, help us to see how majestic and glorious you really are. Help us to know you as the Father who created us, to rejoice in you as the Son who has rescued us, to be strengthened by the Holy Spirit who comforts us. Keep us firm and steady in this faith and bring us when our lives are over into your eternal kingdom where you are worshipped as one God for ever and ever. Amen. We take a moment just to pray for the current situation, uh, for the situation with the coronavirus, for those who are affected by it. Lord, we thank you that you are the one who never leaves us. You are utterly faithful in times of sorrow and joy. On mountaintop or deepest valley, you lead and sustain us. You are our shepherd. We pray for those who face the greatest challenges in this season, those with underlying health issues, the weak and the elderly, those with disability, those caring for children with special needs, the lonely and the fearful. Lord, may your presence bring strength, hope and peace. You are our shepherd. We thank you for all those in the emergency services, those who may be risking their own health to keep us safe, those overwhelmed and exhausted by demands placed upon them. Lord, give them encouragement, energy and wisdom. You are our shepherd. We trust in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We heard a word uh, this morning from Chris Strajnik in Stockholm in Sweden. We pray for him and for other missionaries known to us. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you call your servants to be witnesses to your Son in every land, even to the ends of the earth. We pray for missionaries now that through them you may establish your kingdom and strengthen your people. Graciously remember those who have gone out in your name, that they may hold fast to you and faithfully complete the work you want them to do. Help us to labour with them by our prayers and offerings, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll join together in saying the Lord's Prayer in the traditional form, Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The reading is taken from John chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. That's John chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you've been following us or you've been joining us on a Sunday night, you'll know that we're working through the book of John. So please do turn with me to John chapter 10. And we're going to read the first six verses. John 10 is a quite a lengthy and meaty chapter in the book of John, but we're going to take the first six verses this week and we'll look a little bit more closely at what they say. But first, Tom is going to read for us. So 
over the tongue. <clears throat> well, let me pray before we look a little more closely. Lord God, we come before you and we recognize that you are enthroned high above the earth as the Lord of heaven and earth. We thank you for your holy word. We pray that as we turn to it, we would hear your voice and that we would respond to you and know you and love you more because of who you are. So please open your word to us this evening, we pray. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder if you've ever seen the movie Home Alone 2. Home Alone 2, it was released in 1992. And it was the second in a whole series of movies that had the title Home Alone. In Home Alone 2, there's a family who are from Chicago and they're heading off on holiday to France. And as they head through the busyness of the airport, they look to one particular person to lead them through the busyness in order to take them to where they want to go. And as they head through the airport, one of the sons takes his eye off the leader before refocusing and then following the wrong person. And when he follows the wrong leader, he ends up getting on to a different plane and ending up not in France as he should have done, but in New York City, a place where he didn't want to go. Now, Home Alone 2 is a comedy, but it does remind us of a very important lesson in life. It reminds us of the importance of following the right leader. Because when you don't, you can end up in a place you don't want to be. This evening we're in John chapter 10. And last week, as we looked at John 9, Jesus challenged the Pharisees. But now in chapter 10, he confronts them head on. And through this passage this evening, what we're going to see through Jesus' confrontation is the reminder of the importance of following the right leader through life. Because when you don't, you can end up in a place you don't want to be. Now, before we look at the absolute specifics of this, these few verses, it might be helpful just to take a kind of big picture approach and to get a bird's eye view of what it is Jesus is talking about. Because if you look at verse 1, he speaks about entering a sheepfold by the door. Now, what on earth is Jesus talking about? It's very tempting when you see a word like enter to read in the English definition. And if you did that, you wouldn't be a million miles off. But if you looked at how Jesus uses this word enter in the Gospel of John, you can be so much more precise. And if you go back to John chapter 3, Jesus speaks about entering. And when he does, he speaks explicitly about entering the kingdom of God. Which makes sense here because earlier on in chapter 9, in verse 35, Jesus speaks of the Son of Man, and which, who we know from Daniel 7 is all about the kingdom of God. And so here, as you see this word enter, it alerts us to the fact that Jesus is speaking about his eternal and spiritual kingdom, God's kingdom. But you can be even more precise than that because if you read throughout the Gospel of John, you see how Jesus and John uses this word. You see how it describes certain kinds of behavior. So for example, in John 4, entering describes participation. In John 13, it describes indwelling. And in John 18, 19 and 20, it describes gaining access to something, which means that here Jesus, he's talking about participating in dwelling and gaining access to God's spiritual and eternal kingdom. And notice how he describes that kingdom. It's a 
sheepfold. In other words, the people in his kingdom are sheep. Sheep. Now, sheep isn't a description that John uses an awful lot throughout the gospel, but the other gospel writers do. Uh, Matthew, for example, he describes the house of Israel as sheep. Mark describes disciples of Jesus as sheep. And Luke describes God's people more generally as sheep. And the reason the gospel writers describe God's people as sheep is because the Old Testament is full of references to how God's people are like sheep. Think of the verse that we opened with this evening, the famous Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, which means God's people are his sheep. Think of Isaiah 53. All those like sheep have gone astray. Think of Jeremiah 50. God's people are sheep. And the reason they're described as sheep, or one of the key reasons they're described as sheep, is because as Psalm 100 would tell us, just as sheep are precious lives that belong to their master, so when God calls his people as sheep, they're precious lives that belong to him as their master and their Lord. And notice where these sheep are. They're in a fold. They're safe and secure in a fold with a door where there's only one rightful and legitimate means of access to the sheep. So here as Jesus is speaking, the big picture is that Jesus speaks of God's eternal and spiritual kingdom. He speaks of participating and dwelling and gaining access to that kingdom, a kingdom of precious lives that belong to God. They are his sheep. At the minute, we, we're surrounded by all sorts of negative news, bad news everywhere, everywhere. Uh, news that tells us that our circumstances are so insecure that we're very vulnerable. We're surrounded by disease and death, by crisis and chaos, our circumstances insecure, and we ourselves are vulnerable. But hear Jesus speak right into our world right now and tell us that in the midst of an insecure and unstable world, God has a kingdom, his invisible and eternal kingdom, a kingdom of precious lives that belong to him. And if you are in his kingdom, if you're in that spiritual kingdom, you may not understand it fully. You may not see it fully. It may not make absolute sense to you completely. But if you're in the kingdom of God, you're in a safe and secure place, even though it may not seem like it, even though it might not feel like it. For all of the people in God's kingdom, they're in a safe and secure place in his presence, kept secure by him. There is good news in the midst of the bad news. But within that context here, especially in verses 1 and 2, that Jesus now turns and he speaks of one, if you see in verse 1 and 2, he speaks of a he, an individual, who enters by the door. In other words, just as a shepherd would have come and entered by the door, the only rightful and legitimate means of entry to the sheep, just as a shepherd would have come in in order to lead the sheep as they live out their lives in the midst of the dangers and difficulties of life, so Jesus now turns his attention to focus on the one who comes to lead the sheep. And so this is really a passage that focuses on leadership. It's a passage that's all about the leader, the one who comes to lead God's sheep as they live in the midst of the dangers and difficulties of life. And as he describes that leader as the one who enters through the door, he's describing that leader as a shepherd. 
For the only true leader of God's people is the shepherd of the sheep. A number of years ago, I was in uh, Krakow in Poland. And uh, if you've ever been to pra- Krakow, you'll know that they have a number of different tourist attractions and they'll encourage you to go along and check them out. But the one that they seemed most proud of were the salt mines. So after hearing their sales pitches, I decided, let's go and check out the salt mines. Now, I must say, I, I hate claust- anything claustrophobic. So I don't do particularly well with claustrophobia. And after going along to these salt mines and walking down what seemed like a never-ending series of steps, and walking down into the darkness and feeling the change of temperature, and arriving into a very small, tight space, and then after looking around and noticing that the tour guide counted the number of people only to discover that one was missing, before he left to go and find that one missing person. After seeing all of that, I'd had enough. So I had to get out. So I turned to the last remaining tour guide and I said, listen, I need to get out of here. I have to get out. How do I get out? So he takes me up this path inside this mine and he takes me to this box in the middle of the mine, in the wall, the side of the mine. A rickety, rusty, unsteady, insecure looking box that he called a lift. And he said, you want out? Get into the lift. So I looked at the lift, looked at how it seemed was supposed to work, looked back into the darkness of the mine, and I turned to him and I said, listen, I'll go the other way. Let me take the other way out. Not that way. To which he said, Sir, these are the mines. There is no other way. Here Jesus stands before Pharisees. They're people who have assumed responsibility, ultimate authority of God's church. And what he turns to tell them is that the only way to lead God's people, the only way for leadership to occur in God's people, is to come as the shepherd of the sheep. For this is God's church. There is no other way. And as Jesus stands in front of these Pharisees to tell them that the only leadership of God's people is through a shepherd, he's standing in verse 1 to tell them that even though they have assumed authority and assumed responsibility of God's sheep in his kingdom, they're not the true leaders. They're not the ones with ultimate authority over God's people. It's not them. Which means that regardless of what religious commitment they may have, regardless of what status they may have, regardless of what following they may even have, they're not the true leaders of God's sheep. And notice how Jesus describes them in verse 1. As those who assume ultimate authority over God's people, he describes them as thieves and robbers. Thieves, people who steal. and Robbers, people who use force over the other. As we have seen each week, throughout the Gospel of John, people pick up and references back to the Old Testament. And here Jesus seems to be picking up upon a key passage in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 34, where Ezekiel confronts people who had assumed ultimate authority and leadership over God's people. And Ezekiel said that they were nothing but robbers and thieves. And Ezekiel tells us that the reason he describes them as robbers and thieves is that they were a people who were failing to look after the vulnerable, failing to care and support the weak, failing, failing to protect people from attack, and failing to give them the truth of God's word. Instead, they were coming to assume authority and leadership of God's people in order for their own selfish gain. And here Jesus 
picks up upon the themes of Ezekiel 34 and he turns to the Pharisees and he says, although it may, you may be physically present amongst God's people, although you may have the status of leadership, although people may look to you, the fact is, the reality is that you're nothing but robbers and thieves. For you've come to steal, to rob God's people of the help and support that they need, of the protection and guidance that they need, of the truth and love that they need in an attempt to steal them away from God, taking them to a place no one wants to be. I don't know if you ever watch reality TV, but if you ever watch anything to do with reality TV and you see a group of strangers put together, there's always one thing that happens. Someone leads. No matter who the people are, where they're from, what the scenario is, if you get a group of people together, always there is someone to lead. It happens in families, in work. It happens even in church. So let me ask you this evening, who do you look to to lead you through life? A minister? Church leaders? A bishop? An archbishop? The church itself? A family member? A friend? Someone famous? Who do you look to to lead you through the dangers and difficulties of life? We can look to people, but we can also look to things. See, it's true that in God's church, he gives leaders, but they're not absolute leaders. They're not people with absolute authority. What this passage is asking is, is who do you look to with absolute authority? Who's your absolute leader in life? It could be a person. It could be also a thing. It could be a philosophy, a culture, a cultural mindset, popular opinion, social media. What do you look to to lead you through life? Here Jesus says that when you look to something, that isn't the true shepherd of the sheep. When you look to something to lead you and guide you, there will be plenty of people happy for you to look to them as your ultimate leader in life. And when you do, you're looking to nothing short of a robber and a thief. When you look to anything to lead you through the dangers and difficulties of life other than the true shepherd of the sheep. What you look to will rob you of the help and support and care and protection and truth and love that you so desperately need. Ultimately threatening to take you and steal you away from God. People might be happy for us to make them the leaders of our lives, but often we don't even need an invitation. Often we can turn to things around us and latch onto them. And when we do, and we make those things the leaders of our lives, we are robbed of the help and care and protection and truth and love that we need. And we can be taken away. We're certainly threatened. There's a threat of being taken away from God. Well, as Jesus speaks of the false leaders, those who are not the true and ultimate leaders of God's sheep, now he focuses on the true leader. 
the true shepherd of the sheep, the one who has come, the he, the individual who has come to lead God's people as he leads them out, as they live out their lives and he leads them through the dangers and difficulties of life. And notice how he describes him. He's a shepherd, verse 3, who speaks. I don't know if you've ever been to a farm. If you ever go to a farm and you are with a farmer of cattle or sheep or chickens or turkeys or whatever it may be, you'll probably find the farmer at some point talking to his animals. I remember the first time I was on a farm and I heard a farmer speak to his cattle. I thought, what is he doing? Is he crazy? It's an animal. And yet the reality is that most people with animals talk to them. I bet you if you have a dog, you talk to it. I bet you if you have a cat, you'll talk to it. I know people with goldfish and they talk to it. And the reason why we talk to them is because it's how we relate to them. We relate to those lives, precious lives, we relate to them through our speech. And here Jesus describes the true shepherd of God's people, the one who comes to lead God's people as one who speaks. And notice what he reveals as he speaks out, revealing the relationship that he has with his people as he relates to them. Notice the kind of relationship that he has. Verse 3, he knows them by name. He knows them individually and he knows them personally. But it's even more than that. Because in the Old Testament, a person's name often would summarize the whole person up. Think of Noah. Noah means rest. Because the whole of Noah's life was to give rest to God's people. Think of Abraham. Abraham was called Abraham, meaning father of many nations. Why? Because his whole life was about being the father of many nations. And so as Jesus describes this shepherd as one who relates to his people with the relationship when he calls them by name, he's saying he knows them individually, he knows them personally, and he knows everything about them. He knows them. And it's exactly because he knows them. He knows his individual sheep. Notice the next verb and leads them out. It's because he knows them that he can lead them with a leading in contrast to the false leaders, the Pharisees. He comes to lead them. That as he knows them, he leads them with the help and care of them, with the support and guidance for them, with the leadership that gives them the truth and them the love that they so desperately need. That as he leads them through the dangers and difficulties of life, he may protect them and keep them safe and secure as God's sheep, staying in the place where they have been called to be. There are plenty of things around us that we can look to and latch on to to lead us through life. Here Jesus says that there's only one true leader of God's sheep. It's the shepherd. The one who knows his people individually, personally, knows all about them. And therefore he leads them, guides them, cares for them, helps them, supports them, feeds them with truth and shows them love as they live in the midst of this world. It sounds almost too good to be true, doesn't it? In a world that's full of loneliness, in a world full of broken relationships, where loved ones are missing, where people go through life unknown, Jesus says there is a shepherd. And for all of God's sheep, he knows them. He knows them personally. He knows them individually. He knows them all about them. He knows them perfectly. 
And if you're a member, if you're a part of God's kingdom this evening, know that this shepherd of the sheep knows you. He knows all about you. Everything that you're facing, everything that you're going through. He knows the dangers that face you, the difficulties that face you as you live in this world as one of God's sheep. He knows you, which is why this shepherd can lead you, help you. The shepherd can support you. The shepherd can care for you and protect you, giving you the truth and love that you need. It's almost too good to be true. In the midst of a confused world, there is a shepherd to lead you through all of life. But through and from that shepherd, you may never be stolen away from God, but may remain safe and secure as his sheep. And notice as Jesus speaks, notice in verses, verse 5, 4 and 5, as he speaks and his people, his sheep, the shepherds, sheep hear the shepherd's voice, they listen and they follow to the exclusion of all else. It's when they hear the shepherd's voice and follow him to the exclusion of everything else, they remain safe and secure in all of life. Which begs one final question. Who is this shepherd of the sheep? Who is the one who enters through the gate? Who is the one who, has, who enters through the only rightful and legitimate means of entry to the sheep? Who is the one who knows God's sheep, who leads God's sheep through all of life? Who is the one? Who is it? Notice in verse 6, this figure of speech Jesus used, but they did not understand. This figure of speech. You know in the Old Testament that phrase, figure of speech, is just one word. You know what it's translated as? Proverb. Here Jesus speaks in a proverb. And the person in the Old Testament who spoke in Proverbs was a king. And so here Jesus, as he speaks these words, speaks as a king. Why? Why? Why does he speak like a king? Later on in John 17 is this stunning prayer where Jesus prays to God the Father. And you know what he prays? He thanks God the Father for giving his people to Jesus. The Father gives his people to God the Son. And Jesus thanks him and tells him that he did not lose one. That when God the Father gave God the Son a people to care for and look after and protect, the Son did not lose one. He kept them safe and secure as they lived in the midst of the dangers and difficulties of life. How can he pray it? How can Jesus pray that? Because just after John 17, Jesus Christ would go to a cross. And it's exactly because he knows his God's sheep, because he knows them individually and personally and knows all about them, he knows their sin. And on the cross, as Jesus was nailed and killed on a cross, he would die for the sins of the individual and personal people, the people of God's sheep. And as he died on the cross, to remove all of their sin. Jesus Christ would rise from the dead in order to bring a new people, in order to cleanse God's people of their sin and bring them into God's kingdom. 
that as Jesus rises and as he ascends up into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and rules the world as the King, he pours out his Spirit, that is his voice, his words are proclaimed, and the Spirit comes through the Word. The Spirit would open the eyes and ears and minds, unlike these Pharisees in verse 6. He would open their eyes and hearts and minds to hear his word and turn to Jesus and receive forgiveness and cleansing and be welcomed into God's kingdom that forever they may be led and guided, helped and protect and known and loved by Jesus through his word. For here, John is pointing us to the fact that it is Jesus Christ who by his life and death and resurrection and ascension ascends to heaven as the king of God's kingdom and the king and shepherd of God's sheep. That's why he speaks like a king. Because he is the king. He's the shepherd king of the kingdom. If you're one of God's sheep and you're in God's kingdom, you are safe and secure. But it's also true that as you live out your life in this insecure world, And as you feel vulnerable and you face the dangers and difficulties of this world, they are real dangers and real difficulties. The question is, who will you turn to? What will you turn to to lead you through life? Jesus reveals through his word that it is only Jesus, the true shepherd of God's sheep. He alone He's the only one who can truly lead God's people. The only one. He's the only one who by his word assures you that he knows you and by his word will help you and support you and protect you and lead you and guide you and give you and feed you truth and reassure you of love. It is only Jesus Christ who can lead you through this life, that you may remain with God as his sheep and may never be taken to a place you don't want to be. So come this evening and may Jesus' true sheep hear his word and may his sheep turn away from anything else that has tempted them or has led them through this life. And may tonight Jesus' sheep, God's sheep, hear Jesus' voice and turn to Christ and follow him, the true leader of the sheep, until he takes you home and presents you before God as his precious sheep. Let's pray. Lord God, this world is full of dangers and difficulties. There are people, there are philosophies, there are opinions, there are plenty of things that can come and rob us of the true help and care and support and protection and truth and love that we need as we live in the midst of the dangers and difficulties of life. Lord God, may we be a people who turn to Jesus Christ, the shepherd of the sheep, the only true and absolute authoritative leader of your sheep. And may we turn to you, Christ, and receive your forgiveness and hear your words that you may always lead us and guide us so as to protect us until you take us home. We're we will see that you did not lose one, 
that you have presented us faithfully as God's sheep. Help us to come this evening and forever turn to you and follow you. In accordance with your voice, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to respond by singing. So let's sing. Thank you again to everybody who's tuned in tonight. Uh, wherever you're from, whether this is your first time or whether you're a regular here, um, it's been great to be able to speak to many of the regulars through the weeks. And uh, we trust that you're doing well and you're still able to get through what are these uh, slightly different circumstances. Jesus says that God's sheep hear and follow the voice of the shepherd, the Lord Jesus. So tonight, may, may his sheep 
hear and respond to Jesus' words. And may you follow him and be forever led by him. That you may always remain his sheep. Good night.